Hi guys, Aiden at Adventures in Airtime here and today I want to talk about Pleasure Island Family Theme Park. Um, this was a theme park that opened in 1993. Um, it closed last year in October I think, or September, September or October last year. And um, for those who don't know, it's a theme park that was located in Cleethorpes in Lincolnshire. Um, and sadly, yeah, it closed last year. So me and my friend Jack, um, we heard that the park was closing. It was in all of the local news uh, articles and things. Um, we heard that it was closing, so we decided we'd go for one last visit. And it was a very sad day. Um, I videoed the whole day. I made a little video at the time. I don't think I actually uploaded it anywhere. Um, I just made the video and then just forgot about it. I've just found the video again. So I think what I'll do is I'll show the video and I'll say my thoughts uh, throughout it. It's not going to be a nerdy video about all the facts. Like I say, the park opened in 1993. It closed in 2016. Um, it changed owners at one point, but for the majority of its life, it was owned by Flamingo Land. Um, it was owned by Flamingo Land, basically. And um, in 2010, it was taken over by Melanie Wood, who is the sister of the guy who owns Flamingo Land. So yeah, it's still all the kind of all the same family sort of thing. So yeah, here's the video. So yeah, here's us driving in. The camera is very shaky throughout this, by the way, so I apologise for that now. So we got here, we got here at opening time, um, and as you can see, they made people wait outside. There's a lot of panning shots here. It was a very weird atmosphere. Um, at this point the park had announced it was closing obviously there's a lot of staff there who had lost their jobs so there's a lot of people here working who knew their jobs were going to end the next month It was such a sad feeling walking throughout this park. This is Alakazam, this is the ride that they featured in quite a lot of their adverts. I think it was one of their newest rides, but it was actually quite old. Get down to Pleasure Island! It's got something for everyone! And by the way, this, this ride is horrible. Um, you feel extremely claustrophobic. You lay on your front. Well, when you get in it, you get like, you like climb into it like that, and then it tips you up. So you're like facing down like a flying ride, but it's horrible. You feel really claustrophobic. As soon as I got on it, I wanted to get out. <laughs> Me and Jack are also, we get quite queasy on spinning rides, so we didn't go on this one. <laughs> this is Boomerang. Uh, the, I think they've already got, I think it's the second roller coaster. Oh no, the first roller coaster they built, I think. It opened with the theme park in 1993. As you can see, it's quite a nice looking park. It's got a lot of trees and uh, it's got a big lake and things like that. The ride itself's not so pretty, but. What I was doing here was trying to capture everything because obviously once it's gone, it's gone. It's always really violent, the, uh, the drop from the top. <laughs>
What's quite cool is the queue line is in the middle of the, the ride, so you get to look at it go up and down and then back up again around you. You can't really hear it in the video, but that sound is so loud. When it goes to the top, it like it goes up, stops, and then it just like violently releases the, the chain and it just goes <laughs> really loud. I went a bit further up that side. This is a ride that that ride there that you just saw briefly is uh, like a parachute ride that I went on as a kid, but it's been closed for a long time. This is like a big indoor carousel that they have. And we're going to the go-kart track here. Um, it's not a great go-kart track, I will admit. It's got two go-karts. Um, and they, when they when they release you, they release you one at a time. They don't release you together, so you can't race. It's really stupid. This is me actually going really slow to wait for Jack so he can catch up to me. But the track is just um, you go like up and down, up and down. It's like not actually a car track really. This is Shrieksville. This is I think their newest. Oh no, not their newest, but one of their newer rides. Um, which is like a scare ride. That's a spinning ride that I didn't go on because I felt ill. Now this was really impressive. This was really good, this ride. I thought the theme on this was great. You could tell they like repurposed another ride to make it, but still it was good. You can't really see much here, unfortunately. But it was decent. It's a shame that ride's uh, probably just gonna come, go to waste, I suppose. Exit through the gift shop, of course. It's one of their good, their good thrill rides here. Um, Fabry Booster. I love these rides. This one's a really good one as well. You quite often get upside down for quite a lot of time, which is always fun. You get a good view of the uh, sea as well. I always get really excited on these rides. <laughs> This is the Vekoma like mini mine train ride. Decent again. It's a kid's ride, but it's still good. This is just a look at how empty the park was. It was quite depressing to be at, really. It's like the spinning ride. Jack was on this ride at the time. I really wasn't in the mood for going on this, so. This is Hyper Blaster, their little um, SNS shot tower. It's one of the little short ones where it launches you up and launches you back down again. It's quite cool. But it's funny this ride had like... This is like a really little ride and then Flamingo Land, the sister park, got Cliffhanger which is 180 feet. This is like less than 100. <laughs>
ignore the timestamp on this video as well. It wasn't the March, it was September. <laughs> Quite a good ride, lots of air time. <laughs> this is the horrible claustrophobic ride. You're like trapped between like loads of like you're trapped between the restraints and it feels horrible. It's not like on a, a lot of flying rides where you've got like a vest kind of thing on to, on the front of you. You're like s squished between like two solid bits of metal. It's not great. I like. I remember liking this when I was a kid, but I was way too claustrophobic this time. But it's on rides like this I was wondering like what's gonna happen of it? What's gonna happen to it now? Where's it gonna go? It's funny because you could see a lot of a lot of these rides here are from Flamingoland originally, like the Gravitron, that used to be at Flamingoland. You can see like these uh these are like bikes that you cycle on along like a elevated track and um, like Flamingoland has got exactly the same kind of thing so it's like they, they copied the thing across. You can see quite a nice lake, little miniature railway. Here me and Jack are cycling really slowly so we can get a big uh, gap in front of us. <laughs> That's the cool thing about these rides, you can just stop wherever you want. Oh, bus is still in the bus. Right. Right. So here we're going as fast as we can. The bike was making some horrible noises, you can't really hear it in the video, but it didn't like going fast. That there, the black slide, that's a water slide that's not been open for a long time. But quite a nice scenic park. It's not very big, but it had a lot of like scenery and trees and landscaping to it. That ride in the, f in the foreground there is Obliterator. That used to be at Flamingoland too. It's horrible. <laughs> it's really not a nice ride. Creepy uh, clown with a top hat, or circus master, or whatever it's supposed to be. It was a bit weird. This is Tommy Tinkaboo's Sweet Adventure, which is like an indoor boat ride. It's really good. It's really sad that this is probably just going to go to waste now. Good music, good theming. It's for kids, but it's still good.
Oh, yeah, one thing I will say about this ride is it was not designed for adults. When we went on it, the um, the boat was sinking when we get into the water. I don't know if it'll show that, but the boat was like sinking, on, especially on Jack's side because he's like a bit, a little bit heavier than me. So we were really unbalanced. It's on a conveyor belt at the moment, so it doesn't sink. But once it goes off the conveyor belt. So much to like see in this ride, just steaming everywhere. It's a bit dark to film really, but still, I did try. Oh yeah, you can't really hear it in the video, but just someone was saying it goes way too fast around the course, and it does. The ride is over way too fast. If they just slowed the water down a bit, you'd actually be able to see the see the what's happening better. It was quite emotional being on this ride actually. I don't have a lot of nostalgia for this park because when I was little we only came here once or twice maybe because it was quite far away, a couple of hours to drive. Um, so it, I wasn't feeling sad because I was. it was like a nostalgic thing, I was sad because this was clearly something that people had put a lot of effort into originally and now it was just going to be destroyed, like demolished probably. And that's the end of that ride, anyway. But yeah, my only, uh, I mean it's too late now, but my only word of advice for them on that would have been to slow the ride down a bit, because it was, um, you didn't get to uh, take it all in, really. Very eerie walking around this park. Because um, since this park closed, a lot of people have, have gone in the park when it's since it's closed, like urban exploration. Um, I, I mean, that probably is an interesting feeling, but this was like a, a theme park that felt dead while it was open. There was so n barely anybody there. And just you knew that it was going to be closing and be gone soon, so it was really sad to be there. This just says it all. The chair swing ride with one person on it. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Very sad day, and uh, me and Jack, we're both into theme parks. Um, we have been for a long time. And it was really just sad to see a theme park that had so much potential just go to waste. Um, I'm not gonna get into the p politics about it and why it happened or anything like that, because um, I might save that for another video. Um, I think I might do a video about the whole story of Pleasure Island, but it was just sad to go. We felt like we needed to see it see it off before it closed forever. Um, there was rumours it might reopen, but since this video, um, a lot of the rides have been taken out now. Um, been in the news a few times about urban explorers going in. Um, there's a video of people going up the boomerang. There's uh, a few videos of people running around trying to avoid security, things like that. 
And yeah, um, just sad. It's just really sad to see. And Cleethorpes is a big town, so you'd think that a, a theme park like that would survive. It's one of the only theme parks for quite, quite a distance around it. But yeah, it's uh, sad. And we left just feeling down and sad, really. It just wasn't nice, but at least we got to see it before it closed, I suppose. There was a moment when we sat in the food court and you could just see the staff were just, uh, they, were, they were making the food, they were trying the hardest, but you could just see they were just not happy because obviously they'd, they'd, they'd found out they'd lost their jobs so they were going to have to look for new jobs and Cleethorpes is a town that is, you can see in some areas it's struggling and um, a place like Pleasure Island was giving hundreds of jobs to local people, especially young people. That are now gone, so yeah, it's it's really sad. So yeah, I hope you found that interesting. If not, I'm sorry, but um, I thought it was quite a touching subject, a theme park dying in the UK. Quite often they die they die very last minute and you don't get a chance to see them before they go. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. Um, I'm going to be releasing a lot more videos, so if you could like, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, click the little bell button and you can uh, get notified of all our upcoming videos. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye!